Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk some March favorites. This has been a really busy month for our family. Both of my kids have birthdays in March. And so we had a lot of birthday celebrations and people over. Um, and now my oldest is driving because she's 16. And my 14 year old is about, I mean, like next year I'll have two high schoolers. And I, in my mind, am still seeing them as like little kids like, you know, two and three, and they're not anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I feel like this month has been a little bit different for me. I haven't been feeling my tippy top best. And so it like took a whole week off and I didn't, I have not really been wearing as much makeup as I usually would. And then beyond that, there is the fact that when I do choose stuff, it's very minimal. And I, I feel like maybe what I have in front of me here kind of will reflect that. And there will be months where I like have a ton of stuff. I, I have a lot less and there's not as much new stuff either, which I kind of like. All right, so let me just start with something that surprised me and is this. I've never tried this. These are the Naturium Phyto Glow Lip Balms. I have the shade Mocha. My kids and I, look, <laughs> we have been plowing through this. Um, I love this. It's so pretty. It's so, like glossy and you know lovely but it's sheer and this is the kind of thing that I have been keeping in my pocket because when I'm not wearing a full face of makeup I feel like a, a bright red lip or something like that that's a little bit more can be very obvious and look a little incongruous. Something like this, it has just a little bit of shine, just a little bit of color is so good, and it's really moisturizing. It can feel a little sticky, but what I like about this is it doesn't end up stringing and pulling on the lips. I have used this so much this month. Um, I have some other things that I need to try from Naturium. I've never tried anything from the brand. Um, I know I have their BHA liquid exfoliant here to try. And they also sent me a um, sample of their Plant Ceramide Rich Moisture Cream. And then in my shower, I have been using their body exfoliating wash. I don't know, I forget what it's called. I'll throw a picture up here for you. but. I like it. My concern was that it would be a little too aggressive because this time of year my skin tends to be really dry. I do like it. I don't know if it's a favorite yet, but I was interested in trying the brand, but you know me, it was a lip product that pulled me in because I wanted to get these at the holidays when they had this like whole coffee line, but they were sold out. So I was like, oh look, they're back in stock. Go grab one. And then I grabbed a few others. I have not been wearing a lot of foundation this month, but when I have been, guess what I've been reaching for? This. This is the Prismalib um, Skin Caring Glow Foundation. This is a really lightweight, like hardly anything shade. I just pumped out too much. I don't have anything here, but I do here. So it has a little bit of a glow. It's moisturizing, but it doesn't look heavy on the skin. This is probably one of the most natural looking foundations I have. And I think that if I was looking for something with very minimal coverage, it would be this or the Light Wonder from Charlotte Tilbury until I got the new Lisa Eldridge skin tint. That is even lighter weight than this. I feel like this offers a little bit more coverage than the Lisa Eldridge, just, just a hair more. But you wanna keep in mind that this is scented. It smells like a fragrance, like a floral fragrance. Um, but I don't have any sensitivity to things like that. I like the way that it feels on the skin and it has been giving me a little bit more of a perfected look. So in my entire collection of foundations, this is the foundation I would reach for on the days that I want just a little bit, the smallest little bit of coverage and I would really thin it out with a damp sponge. This is beautiful, but it also has the ability to be built up a little bit. I feel like I get light to light medium with this. Um, other ones that feel kind of like this are the Light Wonder from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, but this shade here is perfect for me. This is N95. And it also matches the N95 concealer. Well, not quite <laughs> from Givenchy, but I have been really liking this. And when I've been wearing foundation this month, this is what I've been wearing. All right. I'm back in love and can't stop reaching for the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. <sighs> this is such a pretty concealer. I like the fact that it's very high coverage and that it is not drying. I just threw some on, you can see it right here. This is the lightest shade in Birch and is a great shade match for me when I blend it all out because when I blend it all out, you won't be able to see it. 
but it gives some very serious corrective power. Like if I want to obliterate this spot here or I want to get rid of my dark circles, she will do it. The other thing that I like about this is although it is hydrating, um, it doesn't ever end up really settling too much into my creases. I'm wearing something that's a little bit more hydrating today and I do feel like maybe it needs a touch more powder. This needs hardly anything to set it. I really like this. I started out with a mini size and then after I plowed through that, I said, you know, I need this in my collection and I went back and got the full size. This has been great. You know my love affair with the Gucci bronzer and the skin enhancing thing from Makeup by Mario, but this month, Hello, Glossier Club Paint. This surprised me. This is the shade Sail. This is the lightest shade of their kind of bronzing colors. I have really, really liked this. Um, I feel like it's, it's a really nice shade that is just enough and not too much. And it gives a nice bronze look, but when you continue to blend it, do you see how it almost goes to nothing? You can certainly build it up, but it brings just the right amount of warmth. It brings just the right amount of color to the face and if I use it with a really big kind of fluffy brush like I'll use it with something that I normally would use for foundation I've been using this brush with it so I'll work it into the bristles and then I'll start pouncing it on the face and you really can hardly tell where it is and for someone like me who's really fair I wear um the second lightest shade in Lisa Eldridge. I wear the second lightest shade in the Glossier foundation I wear the lightest shade in all of Charlotte Tilbury's foundations I'm, I'm very fair this sort of shade is perfect. It brings warmth, but it doesn't look muddy or dirty. It also blends so seamlessly, you don't have this giant line of bronzer on the face. This is absolutely gorgeous. And I feel like it's one of those things where you, you have to have a little bit of restraint and using the right tool and not too much of this and really kind of bouncing it into the skin. You could use a damp sponge, but I really do like kind of like a more compact foundation type brush. I really have been liking this. All right, there is one blush I've been obsessed with all month. It's the new shade from Patrick Ta. This is the shade Not Too Much. Oh my goodness, these are stunning, stunning. Look at these two shades. I'm not wearing this today, but I certainly could have. But what I really like about this is how I end up, and it can be really, this is the powder, it can be really, really, really bold, or you can blend it out. Here's the cream. I did pick up way more powder, but I've been using a really soft kind of wispy brush. I've been using this, and this is from Wayne Goss. This is his number 14. I don't think he makes this right now, but a really soft one to lightly kind of dust on the um, powder and then I'll pick up with my fingers or a damp sponge if I happen to dampen a sponge the cream over the top and it just looks so radiant I've been wearing a lot less highlighter this month mainly because the glow that I get from the cream in this is so pretty and skin like and as somebody who, because I'm fair, contrasting blush can really quickly look like a little bit too much. The shade name, not too much, is perfect because it is that. It's just a little bit, but it's not too much. It doesn't overpower. I don't end up looking like I'm leading the circus in a clown car. You know, this is, this is amazing and I really like this formula and it has made me reach for the other shade in this formula that I have. But what a great product, what a great shade. If you have fair skin, you might like this more neutral, slightly peachy leading blush as well. I feel like the eye look that I have on is very indicative of the type of makeup that if I have been wearing eye makeup, it's like one shade, liner, and mascara. <laughs> um, the one palette that has been a huge find for me that I love so much is the Viseart Pedophore in Isolde. This is, okay. I know it's gonna look really boring, but these are so lovely. They're so lovely. I like the shine that you get from the metallics. I like this little satiny shade here, and this matte is so pretty, but do you see how it's not too dark compared to my skin? The reason this works for me is because these shades are very close to my natural skin tone. So right here. It's, again, it's like the blush, not too much. And that's why I've been liking these. Sometimes I'll use just the matte. Sometimes I'll use maybe just the satin shade or I'll use all four of them and build a look, but it never really looks like it's overdoing it. If you have fair skin, this is a beautiful quad. Um, I feel like this is one of those where the lack of contrast 
is in my favor. I don't know that this would be for somebody with richer deep skin tones. I don't know if this would look great, but for someone who's like a sheet of paper like me, this has been fantastic. Another palette that I've been reaching for because I kind of fell in love with Lisa Eldridge's eyeliner and mascara, her new releases. Um, they're in my favorites this month. I'm wearing both of these today. I like the liner. I, lo I love love the mascara and I'm trying to remind myself not to fall in love with such an expensive mascara but maybe it's already done like I didn't curl my lashes today and I have lift and they're not spiky and there's no flaking and there's no smudging and there's no transferring and this is great and I like how I get like a little teeny tiny wing and I can even take this like right in between my lashes like I do have some gaps right at the root where the lashes grow out of my and I'll just stick this right in there to blank out those skin toned gaps. Like I still have one right here. I thought I got them all. And it's just, I'm not putting it in the waterline, just in between the lashes. Just if I'm missing a lash, this kind of blanks it out. Been loving this. Both of these have been great because I've been reaching for both of those. It kind of made me go, hmm, it's been a while since I've used one of the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. So I pulled out Vega. Oh my goodness. Okay. Again, very neutral, very boring Betty. <laughs> But I, I love this palette. I love this palette. I am not every day using all six shades. I will usually pick like one of these mattes here and then maybe either this shade or this shade right here. If I don't want to pull out liner, I'll use this shade here in Lamp Black. This is such a lovely, lovely palette. I like that we have four mattes in here and two shimmers. Um, this is a really pretty kind of bluey toned gray. And the weird thing is normally I don't like shades like this. Like this is normally like, oh, it's not gonna look good on me, but there, there is something magical about this. For years, I was never able to wear gray shadows because it made me look like a corpse, like I was dead. And normally cool grays like this don't work on me. But when I mix them with the brown shades that are in here and these metallics, Oh my goodness, I get the most stunning, kind of taupey, cool leaning looks. I love this Vega palette. I can't wait to see what else Lisa releases when it comes to eye makeup. I really like this formula. The hard part is they're just really expensive. Um, I have all five of her eyeshadow palettes that she currently has released, but in the future, it'll probably come down to which shades really call to me, which shades do I really need, but I find that out of all five of the ones that I have, this one here in Vega is the one that I use the most. Other eyeliners I've been obsessed with. Still loving this one here from Persona. This is their 24 seven waterproof eyeliner. This is the shade Graphite. Oh my goodness. I'm wearing this one today in my waterline. And the one thing that I've noticed, the older I get, the more you see my upper waterline as a strip of skin colored, like a line, <laughs> like a skin colored line, if I don't put something in there. But my goal is that nothing really ends up down here in my lower lash line. I wanna put something in my upper waterline so that it continues to make the lash, the, the whole, it builds a fantasy, you know, where it's dark and there's no strip of color to kind of distract you where it's dark, 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 but I like that this isn't black. And I feel like it's been really great because wearing this really inky black um, liquid liner, like right above, if I put black in my upper waterline, it can sometimes look a little bit harsh. And so if I keep the line really teeny tiny there and then put something that's like this in my upper waterline, it helps my eyes not to look too stark, but still to blank out what can be a visual distraction, especially to me. Um, and I like how this wears. I, I find that it stays put. I don't get a lot of transfer. Sometimes, you know, I will get like a, there's a, a modicum, a very small amount, and I haven't done this, but normally I'll take a Q-tip and just clean out the bottom waterline. And then from this point on, I won't have any more. I, I normally do that after like 10 minutes of, you know, I'm finishing up my lip or whatever else and I've had this on for a while, I'll do that and then I don't get any more transfer throughout the day. I forgot to do that today, but I like having kind of like the flesh toned bottom waterline, but it all blanked out up top. That's been great. Here's another little beauty. I forgot to mention this in my recent makeup updates. This is the Moira 1.5 millimeter waterproof gel liner. Oh my goodness. This I feel like is a perfect dupe of the 1.5 millimeter eyeliner from Hourglass that is so crazy expensive. 
This is fantastic. I used to buy that all the time in blue, in brown, and this one here is in the brown shade. This comes in black as well. But you get the tankiest little itsy bitsy gel line with this. This is one I've been using above my lash line, in between my lashes, the same way I use Felisa Eldridge to kind of blank out those little missing gaps where I have an eyelash that fell out. And then I put this in my upper water line. This also does not budge. This is great. I really like this. And when it sets, it doesn't move. But I like that it's not black but it is significantly darker and it's so so teensy tiny it is so small that I don't end up having to have like an Amy Winehouse wing because sometimes my eyeliner gets away from me <laughs> I've noticed that and um, something that's really small like this really helps me to kind of keep it exactly where I want it all right brows obsessed with these two guys here I think I've been using the CoverGirl more this is the clean fresh brow um, liner this is their one millimeter micro or nano pencil it is so itsy bitsy so teeny tiny it's so much smaller than a brow whiz or than a precisely my brow from benefit it's much smaller but then benefit also came out with this little tiny guy this is called precisely my brow detailer which is even smaller. Um, the one from CoverGirl is one millimeter. This is 0 0.8 millimeters. It's so skinny. This is the one I have in my brows today, but I like this so much because, and I've talked about this before, I can find that one spot where I like, I need a little color here and just fill in a spot. And I don't have to like worry about too much. And I feel like these products here allow me to fill in those little gaps that I have without having to overdraw my eyebrow. I feel like they're a little strong today, but it's like once I start, sometimes I can't stop. <laughs> but these are amazing. I really, really like them. I, I think I'm more prone to repurchase the CoverGirl because of the price. It's what, $12, $13? I think it's $11.99 at Ulta. You might be able to find it someplace else. I found that they don't sell this in store at my Ulta, that it was only on the Ulta website. And I have not been able, I went looking for it at Walmart, I went looking for it at Walgreens, I went looking for it at uh, Rite Aid, and I couldn't really find it in store. I don't know if it's still new enough that it's not out. Um, this is already in my local Ulta, but this is $25, and you're getting twice as much product here as you are here. So I think in the future, because they are so itsy bitsy teensy tiny, I'm going to get this one. But um, I'm wearing shade 500 right now, and it's a little bit warmer than I would want, so I might go one shade darker next time. We'll see how it goes. But these little tiny micro pencils, these nano pencils, mm, beautiful. All right, so I told you you've been liking the Lisa Eldridge mascara. The other one I can't stop wearing is this one here from Hamish. Now, for years, I have liked the Hamish Smudge Stop Curling Formula. This is the volumizing. So this is a tubing mascara. This is one of those that instead of the curling one that has a curved one like the Lisa Eldridge mascara, this is um, just a regular standard. It, it looks very unassuming, but this is great. But this tubing formula is fantastic because there's no smudging, there's no flaking, there's no transfer. It stays where you put it, it wears all day, and then it comes off with warm water. I had somebody tell me that they were having a hard time getting this off, and I was like, what? So if you've never used a tubing mascara before, what you want to do is you want to get your eyelashes wet with warm water. And you kind of want to, uh, what I usually end up doing is I'll wet a washcloth. I have some muslin face cloths and I'll just, you know, under warm water and then I'll hold it over my eyes for like, I don't know, maybe five to seven seconds. And then I'll do a little bit of this and then I just, and it, they slide right off. Or you could take your fingers and gently press and pull after they've been wet for a little minute. Like, it's amazing how easy it comes off. And if you've never tried that, my one beef is there are some formulas that don't come off that way. They come off in like little crumbly bits. And yes, they might have a lot of the same ingredients, but they don't tube the way that a traditional tubing mascara does. Um, and they do come off with warm water, but it's a little bit more effort. This one here tubes beautifully, comes off easy peasy. Um, I don't ever feel like I'm losing eyelashes and I don't get any transfer, which is why I really have been liking this. So for lip products this month, aside from this lip glow here, I've also been a, a huge fan and user of, and I've mentioned this before, the original formula that they brought back at the holidays from Glossier of the Balm.com. I have been going through my, and I, it's in my purse, I could show it to you, my purse is across the room, but it's the um, hot chocolate OG formula of Balm.com. 
That and this are very similar in color because they're both kind of like a light sheer brown. The other one has a little bit more red to it. This one's a little bit more of like a neutral brown. It's not terribly warm, it's not terribly cool, but they're both very hydrating and they're both kind of sheer and just a little bit of color. But when I've been wanting something more than that, I really have liked these new Merit matte lipsticks. I have five of these, but these are the two shades that I have been wearing this month. The one that I really fell head over heels for is this shade here in Maison. This is a kind of a mauve rose tone. It is so pretty. But what I like about these is these are, first of all, they're $26. I feel like the packaging is really elegant. Um, but beyond that, they have this ability to kind of like blur a little bit. Like if you were to, and I've done this where I put a little bit on and then I just kind of pull it out so it's blurred. It looks so gorgeous. I can have more color on the inside and just kind of blur it out to the edge. These are not drying. These are very comfortable. They kind of make my lips look a little bit better, despite the fact that they're a matte lipstick. The other shade I've been loving is the warm red called Vermilion. I have both the warm and the cool red. I like Power, which is the cool red, but this is the one I've been wearing. I've been wearing this one quite a lot. And then I will take a little bit of it and tap it on my cheeks and really blend it in if I need a little bit of color to my cheeks, but I really, really do like this shade. And I don't really need any more color, but let's just change things up a little bit here. They're absolutely beautiful. I feel like they perform on the same level as some luxury matte lipsticks that I really like. The formula is creamy. It doesn't fade outside of my lip line. It's not drying. It's just a really elegant formula. And then beyond that, the minute I was doing my luxury lipstick rankings for satin and cream formulas, it had for most of winter, I've been pulling for velvet mattes. I've been pulling for either that or just like a lip balm in general. And I forgot how much I love the Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucent. This is the shade um, Meet Me in Berlin. I've been wearing this one a lot. This is one that I had on earlier today, as well as the shade Painterly. And this is one that literally has been living in my purse. They seem very similar in shade. This is a little bit more brown. This has got a little bit more rose to it, but these, are just the most spectacular. Not too much, just enough, hydrating, comfortable, elegant, don't find all the fine lines in my lips, $36 lipsticks. I lo love, love, love. I read an amazing book this month called The Women. It's by Kristen Hanna. And I struggle with her as an author because I feel like I've read three books of hers, The Nightingale, The Four Winds, and now this one called The Women. This one just came out last month in February. It's brand new, brand new. But the problem that I have is that I can't put the books down. She writes in such a compelling and engaging way and the characters are so fully realized that I just get pulled in, but then there's so much catastrophe that it's like, <gasps> you know, sometimes I feel like after that I need to either read something that's nonfiction or I need to read something where like there's a happy ending and everything gets tied up with a bow and everyone leaves happy because it, it just can be a lot. It's a lot of grim realities of life. Um, and I've loved all the books I've read from Kristen Hanna. Recommend them 10 out of 10. But this one with the women is about women who were nurses and volunteered to go to Vietnam. Now, as somebody who was born in 1975, the war for the U.S. was over by that point. Uh, but I remember, especially before 10 years old, kind of hearing about it on the kind of edges of society. A lot of times we wouldn't really talk about it but you kind of knew who had been there and what their feelings were surrounding the war. Um, but because nobody really talked about it in front of me as a kid, I didn't, I had so many unanswered questions, so many unanswered questions. And my dad's draft number never got called, but uncle served, my father-in-law served, um, but nobody talks about it. it. It's just one of those things that America was very divided. I think that was the first time in a long time that we were as divided as a nation. And so it was really interesting to read the contributions of women during such a difficult time in our history and the difference that they made there and then the struggles that they had coming back um, after serving. And um, Kristen Hanna, I remember reading the author's note at the end, mentioned that um, she was trying to make a little bit of a distance between like actual locations and actual times 
and the people that um, she had who were reading it for her who had experienced it, nurses and um, Vietnam vets who were there, they're like, no, 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 you need to make it real. She used real locations and um, real things that happened at specific times. She might have like moved some of the dates just a little bit to serve her purpose, but it was really interesting to read that. And it really now has um, kind of sparked an interest in me to know more because I, I know so many people who served, but I know very little myself about that time because I was born after and nobody really talks about it. And I, and I understand why, but it, it was really an intriguing read and so, so good. So, so good. But I love how she as an author writes really strong female characters and every book I've read of hers, that's what it's about. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Just keep in mind, it is a book about war. It is kind of a difficult read at points. And there's a lot of real messy humanity. It doesn't, it's not um, like a romance novel. It's not like a fantasy novel. It's, it's, it's definitely very gritty and very much grounded in like the realities of daily life for people who are struggling. So it, it was very compelling, very well written, and such a good read, but it may not be for everyone. Other things that I've loved this month, my husband and I are still trying to finish up, and maybe, I think it might be done now, and I hope not, oh, I hope not, is season two of Tokyo Vice. I've been watching that on HBO, and what an interesting story. It's based on um, an actual journalist who lived in um, Japan, an American journalist, and he was kind of following a crime beat, um, with the Yakuza and it's not like 100% accurate to what he wrote in his experience but it's based on him and his life and some of his experiences but there is a lot of artistic license I found um, but he I want to read the book that he wrote the I think his book is also called Tokyo Vice but it, it's just such an interesting interesting cultural shift and difference um, but so intriguing I really have been enjoying that show so much the acting in it is really, really good. I'm trying to think of other things I've been really excited about. Um, you know, nothing really beats my morning daily cup of coffee. My um, parents got my husband and I um, a little tiny espresso machine, a little Breville, I forget what it's called, but it's the cutest little machine and it stops me from going out for coffee at Dutch Brothers or Starbucks or anywhere else in town. I just make myself a latte in the morning and I'm so happy. And it's been weird because the week that I'm recording this, um, my kids are on break. They're on spring break. And so I'm used to in the morning, you know, the kids are gone now that my 16 year old is driving. The kids are at school. I'm finally up puttering around the house. My husband is working. He works from home. So he's in his office with the door closed and it's just me and the cat. And so I can make myself a cup of coffee, sit down and slowly start my day. But this whole week, my kids have been like, Hey mom, Hey mom. And I'm like, I just want 10 minutes to be peaceful with the cat and my cup of coffee. Oh, anyway, it's been it's been an interesting month, um, but mostly I'm glad that spring is here. I could not be more excited that there's more sunshine. There's more things blooming. Um, the plum tree in my front yard is starting to have blossoms come out. Um, some of my primroses are coming up, like all different things. Life is coming back to the Pacific Northwest and I could not be more grateful. Hey, thank you so, so much for watching today. Let me know what your March favorites were. Remember, it doesn't have to be beauty related. It could be something that you're watching, a book that you're reading, a hobby that you're enjoying. It could be your favorite sandwich. You know, tell me whatever it is that you just have been like hooked on and you can't stop. I would love to know. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.